This is episode 28, An Entrepreneur's Journey with Gene Ginsberg. Welcome to the Reignite Podcast. My name is Todd Judkins, a former naval officer and corporate consultant turned life coach. And each week we'll bring you an inspirational person or message to help you discover how to reignite your life, get back in the game, and thrive in everything you do. Thanks for spending time with me today. Now let's light the fuse and reignite. On today's podcast, we are privileged to have with us Gene Ginsberg, number one best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, digital marketing expert with more than 10 years of industry expertise, helping companies scale revenue, optimize sales and marketing processes, and improve productivity. On the Reignite podcast, we are dedicated to bringing you inspirational people and messages to help you reignite your life. Many of you are looking to reignite your life through entrepreneurship. Well, Jean has lived that life and is here today to share her journey and how she has navigated the processes and built two successful companies, JeanGinsberg.com, which is a digital marketing education company in Ginball Digital Marketing, a digital marketing agency. Jean has recently launched her new book titled Win New Customers, How to Attract, Connect, and Convert More Prospects into Customers in 60 Days Using Digital Marketing. The book is an Amazon number one bestseller. So let's welcome Gene Ginsberg to the Reignite Podcast. Hi, Reignite Nation. We are here today with Gene Ginsberg, and we're going to talk about digital marketing. Hey, Gene, how are you? Oh, I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, no, that's awesome. And we're excited to have you here because you are going to be the first business focused guest on the Reignite podcast and the importance of reigniting, finding a new path. And a lot of us are going to go down that road of being solopreneurs, entrepreneurs. And I know you've already gone down that journey and we appreciate you coming back on the show and showing us where we've been. So why don't we start with your entrepreneurial journey? How did you get started and how did you be, how did you find success in the entrepreneurial world? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to share a little bit of my experience. So, um, I, I have been doing digital marketing for 11 years now. And when I first started off, I was just working in the corporal world. And, uh, but it was a good experience for me because I got to kind of go through the steps and I got to um, work the, the corporate ladder a bit in the beginning. But it was also like just I learned a lot about digital marketing um, during that period of time. But eventually I realized, you know, I, I wanted to be on my own. I wanted to, not like on my own, but I wanted to split off on my own and uh, start something of my own because I, I realized that I would be doing much. I just felt like I would be a much better leader, a much better manager if I were to start my own business. So uh, about five years ago is when I decided, you know, this is the time I was working at an ad agency at the time and just wasn't really happy there a lot of politics going on so i decided hey you know i think this is a good time for me to to split off and start uh, my own thing so um i i really thought going into being an entrepreneur was going to be super easy no problem like gonna be really successful and of course you know i i found success but it was it was definitely much harder than i thought it would be yeah, I, you know, I can definitely relate to that because I spent 25 plus years in, in the corporate world climbing the ladder, having a lot of success, only to realize my ladder was up against the wrong wall. So, you know, going into this solopreneur journey is what I call it. You know, when you're really starting out and trying to build that team around you um, was something that was I was attracted to and something that drastically changed the direction of my life. So, you know, with that journey, you know, and, you know, I'm behind in here so i'm going to learn as much from you as anybody listening to this you know the advent of social media has really changed the the landscape for entrepreneurs out there you know if if somebody's just coming in and thinking about you know hey i want to hit that entrepreneurial journey and they're looking at digital marketing out there and it's this vast ocean of where do i start and so many shiny objects out there what is your advice where would you tell them to direct their focus Sure, that's a very good question, and I would say I would start with social media, um, and the reason for that is um, 
the statistics are showing, and I've done my research on this because I do presentations about this, um, especially for industries that I work with who have done a lot of traditional marketing and now are switching over to, to, to digital marketing. And so the stats are uh, people are spending on average about 20 minutes a day on social media. So that includes like Facebook and Instagram. So I would definitely look into, if you're just getting started, look into creating social media accounts and then creating content for your social media accounts. So that could be videos, it could be blog posts, uh, it could be just uh, you know social media posts. But uh, talking about uh, whatever is your area of expertise and really offering uh, value and adding value to your audiences, whoever it is your audience, whether it's entrepreneurs, whether it's, um, I don't know, contractors, I mean, whoever is your audience, whoever you're trying to target, um, really uh, try to offer value up front. Um, a lot of times as business owners and entrepreneurs, we, we were like, hey, you know, we will have to make the sale, we have to make a sale. And that's true, of course, we do. But... Um, it's very important to offer uh, value upfront before asking for the sale. Yeah, I, I think that's a valuable lesson because, you know, everything I've been taught was value, 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 and more value, 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 and to build that relationship. So so how, is, how do you use social media to build that relationship or to connect with your audience? Sure. I, I think just cr- creating content uh, that mm-hmm. offers that value, of course, is going to be what you're going to be posting to social media. So, um you know, it's, uh, it's the audiences are really learning about you as you're posting to social media as well, because they're learning about you and your brand. Um, they're learning about what you know, what's important to you, where you can add value. So, um, yeah, I, I'd say I, I do a lot of video creation in my business and I have a YouTube channel. If you guys are interested, you can go to YouTube and just find my name, Gene Ginsburg. And I've been doing that for the last couple of years and I, it's been um, is I, I want to add value to my audiences, and I talk a lot about digital marketing, of course, entrepreneurship, um, entrepreneurial journey, <laughs> um, and I'm still learning a, a lot. I, I still think that even though I know digital marketing, there's always things to learn. I know a little bit about entrepreneurship, but there's always things to learn, and there's always things that are new and upcoming. So uh, I'd say that's actually another piece of advice that I would uh, highly recommend to anybody who is listening to this podcast. If you're just getting started with being an entrepreneur, uh, continue like being a, being a lifelong learner. I think is what has helped me become a better entrepreneur, a better leader, and a better manager. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that. I think you know, as soon as you think you have something figured out, something's going to change. You're going to learn something new that's going to take you in a different direction. Um, it, it is it is a life learn. You know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, I couldn't agree more. It's going to be a lifelong learning event. Um, but one of the things, you know, when I started on my personal journey down this road that, you know, that I would get caught up in is what I call the shiny object syndrome. Yeah. You know, as you're learning, you're taking in all this stuff and there's so much out there. And then, you know, you end up going, I call it success, success seeking, you know, going from one platform to the other platform, using one technique to the other technique. You know, what's your advice around how do you kind of defeat that shiny object syndrome? I agree, and I talk about shiny object syndrome quite a bit in my content, and I agree that does that can happen. We can all go go down deep rabbit holes, and uh, because we might find something new, and we're like, oh, you know, this platform is great, and I should be using it, and then I should be going to this social media platform, um, and that can happen. But I would, I guess, my recommendation there is just to really do your research on everything, you know. Um, I'd say, as we talked about just a couple minutes ago, being a lifelong learner, of course, you know, there's many people who might be like, hey, you got to use Instagram, but do your research on Instagram and see, is this really uh, what, what your audience, where your audiences are hanging out and then do some testing. So maybe test out Instagram, put put some posts on there, see if you're getting feedback. um, And then I think that that's how you gauge it. So I'd say research first, then test. And if you're getting, you know, decent results in the beginning, then, you know, expand it, expand it, make it bigger. Um, if you're not getting any results, and if you're not getting any engagement, then probably make some tweaks or maybe look at other platforms. But absolutely, uh, the more you know about a platform, the, the more educated you can be and the more you can use it and figure out if you're, you should be using it or not using mm-hmm. it. Yeah. How can one do some research to, to figure out where their audience might be more 
attracted to, whether it's uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I use LinkedIn as well, um, just because my audience um, is there as well in big numbers. You know, what's your advice to somebody who wants to say, you know, where do I start? What what platform should I really go dive into and do some research about my audience? Sure. So I think the first step would be to figure out who your audience is, mm-hmm. is and what and one of the things. The main thing that I do before I get started with a new client is we need to figure out who your ideal target market is. So first understanding that piece. Um, So is your target market uh, teenagers? Is it 20 somethings? Is it, you know, millennials? Is it moms? Um, Is it, um, you know, Gen X or so really understanding first who, and it's, and it's not only necessarily just like certain generational pieces, but also like who, um, you know, where are they hanging out? Um, you know, what blog, blogs are they reading? Are they going to certain conferences? So are they B2B? Are they B2C? So for example, you know, in your case, uh, you're, you said you use a lot of LinkedIn. So it looks, sounds like you do some B2B. Yep. Uh, um, so absolutely. So thinking about those things first. Um, and then, uh, so once you understand who your ideal target market is, then doing research, like just on Google and really understanding, okay, where are 20 somethings hanging out? <laughs> let's say, and you'll probably find that a lot of them are hanging out on Instagram or on Snapchat. Um, if you're looking for millennial moms, they're probably hanging out on Facebook just by doing a go- some Google research and, and reading some articles or blog posts about that or watching some videos. There's a slew of information out there that we can all access. So I think that would be my recommendation for uh, like identifying which platform you probably should be using. Yeah, no, no. I um, I started out when everybody was telling me you need to be on Facebook, you need to be on Facebook, and as my messaging got a little bit, excuse me, more succinct, you know, I discovered that you know, I you know, a lot of what I'm targeting, you know, are you know, professionals and HR departments, mm-hmm. right? So that's you know, so and I was already on LinkedIn and using it quite a bit, so moving over to LinkedIn made sense to me. Um, same thing with Instagram. So, um, you know, finding out that a lot of my audience was there as well. So, yeah. And, you know, one of the things I found out, too, and I'd like you to address this, is that, you know, there's a lot of trial and error involved. And I know you mentioned it earlier, but can you talk a little bit more about that and and the fact of being patient and doing the testing, how important that is? Absolutely. I mean, I can talk about trial and error and just about entrepreneurship first and and, and then funnel down to trial and error in in platforms and social media. But um, I, uh, when I first started off as an entrepreneur, I had a couple of failed businesses in the beginning, um, but I learned a lot from that. So there's a lot of trial error in the beginning, just, just to try to set up a business. <laughs> so, so that's, and I think that's not uncommon at all. I think anybody who was a successful entrepreneur will probably say that the, he or she has had some failed businesses in the beginning. Um, because mm-hmm. unless you come from like that entrepreneurial space, maybe you worked at a very entrepreneurial company, or maybe you got your MBA in entrepreneurship or went to college, like it's really hard to become, uh, have that experience unless you actually go through the experience, right? It's one of those things that like nobody can really tell you about it unless you actually go through it yourself. So, um, so that was trial and error for me in the beginning. And then in terms of testing, um, when it comes to digital marketing, you know, it's all it's all going to be testing for the most part. Um, I know that I could work with a client and I can say, you know, I think these are the best practices and what I think would work. But again, like these are just my ideas um, and, we, and the market will be the one to tell you if this idea is right or wrong. But you have to test it out with the market. Um, before you can, you know, before you can really become successful, right? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I, and I love what you said about, you know, the entrepreneurial side of that. Um, one of the things that I had to embrace early in my entrepreneurial career is that, you know, there's no such thing as failure. There's only feedback. You learn so much out of what, you know, the market would label your failures, um, that it really just became feedback to me. And it's always, you know, you learn the lesson, you improve, and then you get to the next level. And, uh, you know, life, life is a harsh teacher at times. And, but it's just feedback that's coming to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I think a lot of times, People who are kind of getting started and being a solopreneur, entrepreneur, they, they have that fear of the failure, um, and it's it's very real. And a lot of people maybe even are afraid to get started of, in being an entrepreneur because of that 
of that fear of failure. But um, once you once you realize that it's not really that important, <laughs> and it's it's just like a variable that you can get through or get by. Um, and, it, and it's actually just feedback and not failure that it makes things so much easier. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell people that everything you want is just on the other side of your comfort zone. So if you're if you're feeling that fear, that just means pay attention. It doesn't mean stop. <laughs> you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, everything. I mean, being an entrepreneur, you have to step outside of your comfort zone in yeah. order to uh, to be successful at it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Gene, in in your entrepreneurial journey, you know, you know, I I talk about being a solopreneur, um, and that means that you know, hey, you're just starting out. You 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 probably are on a shoestring budget, and you're kind of wearing all the hats of your organization. You know, when you're in that stage of your entrepreneurial journey, how did you kind of build the team and build the support and kind of recognize the things that you needed to take on and things that you needed to outsource? Yeah, that's a very good point. So, of course, in the beginning, uh, I did everything. I serviced my clients. I was I did the bookkeeping myself. I did the, the, the tech development myself. So I learned a lot. But um, I think one of the one of the recommendations I would create um, or I would make now, having created a team and, and having support and uh, team members in my life, which is super helpful for me, is uh, one of the things that I would say there's like, I'm part of actually an entrepreneurial group called the Entrepreneurs Organization, and we actually went through this exercise. So one of the exercises about how to identify what you need to do yourself and what you need to outsource or help or or find help for is really what you enjoy doing and what you don't enjoy doing, and then um, how important it is for your business and how you know and and how not important it is for your business. So if there are tasks out there that you really love enjoying and you're really good at them that you should probably keep doing them. But if there are tasks out there that you don't enjoy and you're not very good at them, then you probably should outsource them or find a virtual assistant or a a coordinator or something like that to help you get started. And uh, honestly, I mean, I started off with just having one virtual assistant in the beginning and you know, you just have them on for a few hours a week maybe. And yeah, you have to spend a little bit of budget um, in order to, to get that, but it, it just makes things so much smoother for your business. You'll start realizing, you know, I don't have to do these certain things that I like, for example, I don't like to do them maybe, or maybe I'm not really good at doing them. And there's someone out there who's willing to do them and they're totally open and they're totally, um, you know, uh, find pleasure in doing them. Then um, absolutely. I think it would also free you up to do things that you would actually enjoy doing and also that help grow your business. Yeah, no, that's, that's some great advice, uh, cause, I had to learn that the ho- the hard way, you know. It's I can tell you right up. Full disclosure, I hate the bookkeeping. <laughs> right. Yep. So I had to sit there and say, okay, you know what? This is something you should put some budget on and get rid of it instead of trying to struggle through it and spend your whole weekend getting everything in line. Um, and also, I found out there were some things that you know I enjoyed doing and learning and growing my skill set on. But I had to kind of realize that, you know, that probably wasn't the best use of my time and energy, even though I liked it. So I kind of fit on both sides of the equation. An example of that is um, editing of these podcasts, right? You know, I kind of enjoy that and geeking out and some of the editing tools. But you know what? There's professionals out there um, that will do it and do it well. I have I have an audio engineer that he is just fantastic. And, you know, it's just better if he does it. I get a better quality product, you know, and even though I like to tinker with it and I do some tinkering and some other recordings, you know, that I'm going to put on like Facebook or, or I actually send um, uh, audio emails, you know, I can do that and still tinker with it. But for this stuff, nope, you know, outsource it. Yeah, and that's actually a really good point is that there's a lot of things that we maybe like to do or don't mind doing, but are probably not a best use of our time. And that's really, I think, where the entrepreneurial uh, uh, people who are just getting started in entrepreneurship um, can be the breaking point for their business. Because um, if you think about it, you know, like if you're charging, let's say, for your time, you know, how doing administrative tasks or tasks that, you know, can be done by someone else that you can outsource um, you know, are you really getting the most benefit uh, and getting really, let's say, paid for that hour or if you're doing administrative work um, versus can you be working with a client and getting paid the actual amount that you should be getting? So thinking about that in that sense, you know, and of course, there's many administrative things or um, 
things that, you know, we could be doing that is helping the business, but is it really growing the business? So we need to uh, think about that as an entrepreneur as well. Yeah. I always tell fellow entrepreneurs, the first fire firing you're going to do is of yourself. <laughs> you know? Todd, exactly. Todd, you're fired. You're not going to do bookkeeping anymore. Right. You're out. You're fired from, from doing podcast editing. Uh, yeah. Fired. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine that exit interview? <laughs> <laughs> Todd, what did I do wrong? I don't know. And everybody thinks you're you're going back and forth. So no, that's that's awesome. You know, um, you know, we also talk about how important relationships are in in an entrepreneurship and in digital marketing and bringing out you know the best value we can because we come back to that value proposition. You know, how did you build your relationships within the entrepreneurial world, and how did you kind of extend that over into your digital marketing agency? Oh, absolutely. I mean, in, in any business, whether you're in digital marketing or not, or whatever it is that you do, of course, relationships are going to be extremely important. And, um, I, you know, I build relationships, I'd say, through my previous jobs that I've had. I think that was kind of definitely the foundational piece. And some of the people that I've worked with, you know, in the corpo space have now become entrepreneurs. Um, and I build a lot of relationships through um, going to conferences, I would say. Um, met a lot of people that way uh and going to things like meetup so i've done a lot of networking in my in my career in my entrepreneurial career i find a lot of value in that because you never know who you're going to meet <laughs> i've met some some big clients that i've had for many years now that i met at a networking event um and i'd say uh my entrepreneurial group so i'm part of a couple of entrepreneurial groups um one is called Entrepreneur Organization, another one is called the Young Entrepreneur Council, and I've made a lot of um, strides in networking and and connecting with those people as well. And I'd say, you know, every, I guess everything that you do, whether it's entrepreneur groups, whether it's meetups, you know, the more you put in, the more you get out. So it's going to be that, and you have to really put in the effort, you know, if you're going to try to get the most networking or the most out of your um, I don't know if you want to say your entrepreneur groups, you really have to put the effort out there and connect with people and stay on top of it and um, add value, of course. So I'd say, yeah, in any business format, whatever it is that you're doing, uh, relationships are going to be extremely important. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I was just blown away by, you know, me launching this, you know, first I wrote a book and then launched a podcast about the book and just how much this podcast has impacted the relationships I've been able to build, you know, both personally and professionally. And I, you know, as an entrepreneur, I think that that is, you know, something that always has to be top of mind because you just never know um, where, you know, the nuggets coming from, the relationships and, and um, partnerships you can form just by providing that value and giving, giving, giving back to, you know, it. so it's just been awesome for me as well. So, so let's get back to that shiny object syndrome. Okay. You know, how did you, you know, as an, as an entrepreneur, you know, how long did it take you to, you know, to kind of recognize that, hey, I have this under control because, you know, in my journey, that was probably a two year process and I'm sur surprised I survived it <laughs> and a costly one as well. Interesting. Okay. Um, so how did you recognize that you were in the shiny object space and how did you get out of it? That's like actually an interesting question for you as well, because it sounds like you've done it for a couple of years and then you're like, okay, I need to get out of this thing. Well, I think, you know, you, you start understanding is, you know, when you have like three or four courses backed up, right? Oh, there's another course I'll go, you know, and, you know, then I started kind of, uh, creating rules around, you know, even, even education, um, uh -huh. like I will not invest in another course until I finish the one I'm currently on, you know, even if it's, um, I, you know, I, I can, you know, whether I invest in a course or whether it's a free course from Coursera, you know, any kind of knowledge, but make sure I focus in on the one I have in front of me instead of, you know, Oh, the next one comes along and you start, um, it starts backing up and backing up and backing up, right. Making sure that I have very little, um, books, audio books in my library at a time. So okay. that I make sure that I can finish listening to the one I'm listening to, you know, and it's just in really in making sure that, you know, I take the time and say, okay, here's my plan and what fits 
inside of that plan. And if it doesn't fit inside of it, then why am I doing it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's a very good point. I think it all goes back to goals. And that's really the foundation of, of being an entrepreneur. And I have to be honest, like I didn't really set goals until very recently for my business. And I've been in business for the last five years. Um, so I think, yeah, it's all going to go back down to goals. So if your goal is to, you know, grow your revenue a certain amount or to get, you know, X number of consulting clients or whatever it might be. First, I think setting your goals, of course, is going to be important because then that's going to lead into the shiny object syndrome or the removal of it. Because if you're focused and also focus, I'd say that's going to be an important piece. I'd say that's how I got around shiny object syndrome is is focusing on a specific thing and or a specific goal um, and really understanding, okay, well, um, if I stray, if I move to the side, is this going to get me to where I need to be? And if the answer, of course, is no, then then perhaps that is that is the shiny object you know, that I shouldn't be following. Yeah, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree more because, you know, I, I've, it, it's taken me time to realize that, you know, I have to sit down and, and you know, okay, here's, a, here's an investment, right? I know it's going to help me grow me. But is this what I need to do right now? Is this where I need to direct my resources right now? And really making sure I have that kind of evaluation period instead of being spontaneous and, and going out and, and doing something, then that's what usually happened, right? Oh, yeah, I can see I need, you know, this training about LinkedIn selling is going to be really, really great. Yeah, but you know what? You're already studying Instagram here. So why don't you kind of <laughs> focus in on Instagram, yeah. right? Or any other, you know, or study audio processing, right? And then, you you know, with the audio processing, is this what I really need to do now? I have an audio engineer that, you know, that has way more expertise than I can ever attain. And that's not my my core value, my core, you know, business proposition. Um, so, you know, it, it took some discipline, I think is the word I'm looking for. Discipline around your focus and your goals to really, really, and you never, I don't think you defeat the shiny syndrome. You just become, <laughs> you become aware and you're able to, sub, you know, suppress <laughs> those urges to go around and get those shiny, shiny objects out there. Yeah, so I, I, I would say, um, I, I would also say like completing whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> so even if let's say you're, you know, you've got a course on Instagram and, um, instead of, you know, having shiny object syndrome, not you, but I'm just saying in general, everybody who's listening to this, um, you know, instead of just jumping to LinkedIn or jumping to Facebook advertising, really follow through, following through, I would say, I guess is what I'm trying to say, following through on that Instagram course, really understanding it, really learning it, and then saying, okay, is this really going to benefit my business? Um, so I'd say follow through is also part of the way and how you avoid shiny object syndrome. Yeah, excellent point. And that will build the discipline you need yep. and and really take you to new heights. I think that's one of the killers um, of entrepreneurship is, you know, that shiny object syndrome because it leads to incomplete work, which leads to, you know, fulfilling that fear of failure. And if you don't have the resiliency to pop up again, um, you know, your dream could get snuffed out. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, if, you know, if I was coming to you and say, Gene, I, I, I don't know anything about social media. I don't know anything about digital marketing, but you know, I got a budget and I want to do some paid advertising, you know, but I've heard everything out there from, you know, doing Facebook ads, you know, and Instagram to LinkedIn to, you know, um, buying list from, from, from other entrepreneurs. Where would you start with me coming in the office, wide eyed, glazing, you know, ready to just grab those shiny objects like we were talking about? Where would you sit me down and say, okay, Todd, this is what we need to do first, second, third? Um, I would say that paid media is going to be more of an advanced strategy. So I probably wouldn't recommend that to, I mean, I don't recommend it to everybody. So if, uh, if, that audiences who are listening to this podcast are really just are starting out. I would really first start off with social media and creating content. And then I would probably boost that content, um, you know, see if you're getting engagement. And I would say that kind of be the first step, you know, the first like putting my toe into the water for paying content for, you know, actually paid media for paid content. And then if you're getting good engagement, so 
all of this is going to be, it, you know, how are people reacting? How is your, are your audiences and your target market reacting to your content? And really paid media starts off with just content. So even if let's say um, you want to run some, let's say Facebook ads, well, the first thing I would recommend is just create some content, whatever it might be, a video, um, a blog post and boost that and again, see, test it out, see how it goes. And um, I mean, content is really part of everybody, should be part of everybody's digital marketing strategy. Um, I, I probably wouldn't recommend running ads right away just because it's more of a, um, you know, it's, it's a, it can be risky sometimes. So we have to be pretty sure that it's going to work um, by, by creating content and, and uh, using that as, as an initial paid media strategy, I would say. Yeah, that's excellent. And I would, I would recommend too that, you know, when you're creating that content, there's a variety of different ways for which you can use that content, you know, because th this interview right here, you know, is going to be a podcast, but it's also going to be a blog post. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, repurposing content and if the audiences are not familiar with that, that's a, a great way to not have to be like constantly creating content is like, yeah, you, you have a video, then you make a, a podcast out of it, then you make a blog po post out of it, then you shorten the videos and make Instagram um, videos out of them, but because Instagram videos can only be a minute long or less. So there's many different ways of just repurposing content. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you can create teaser content that's video, it's audio, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of ways you can repurpose. So, Gene, before we wrap today, I want to talk yeah. about your, your new book. It's called Win New Customers, How to Attract, Connect, and Convert More Prospects into Customers in 60 Days Using Digital Marketing. What's that about? Well, thank you very much for asking. Yes, it was a, 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 it's a number one best-selling book on Amazon. And I was very excited to put it out there. And the reason really I wanted to, I've always wanted to write a book. And I felt that with all of the experience I've had with private clients and doing the digital marketing and helping them with their digital marketing, I felt like I'd be doing a disservice to the entrepreneurial community if I kept all of these things to myself. So I felt, you know, I thought, hey, you know, there's a lot of people out there probably who could benefit from uh, reading a book like that because uh, it could help. It has helped so many of my private clients grow their businesses. So it's been such an amazing experience. Um, yeah, the, I wrote the book about six months ago, whenever we're right now, we're in, at the end of May of 2018. And um, it's been such just a whirlwind of, um, you know, uh, feedback, I would say, from people who have read the book and have said positive things about it. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Now that's great. And congratulations on the Amazon number one. That is a tremendous feat. So you were also going to, uh, you have a way for people to get a hold of that book, the uh, downloadable copy of that book as well is right. Yeah, absolutely. So if anybody who's listening to the podcast, I'm giving the book for free in PDF format. So I hope you can take advantage of that. If you just go to win new customers with an S win new customers that online, when new customers that online, uh, you can download the book immediately. So you can start learning all about digital marketing right away. And um, I really, the book is short and I made it that way so that it's not overwhelming because that's one of the main things I hear about digital marketing is it can be very overwhelming. And it really, it goes into a simple way of how to get started with uh, digital marketing. So I hope you guys can take advantage of that. And if you want to find me uh, online, I am on social media because I love social media. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Gene Ginsburg, digital marketing expert on my YouTube channel, Gene Ginsburg, Instagram, Gene Ginsburg, Facebook, Gene Ginsburg. So yeah, basically, if you just Google my name, I think all of my social media should come up. Yeah, and, I, and I'll be sure to have all those links, including Gene's social media contacts in the show notes. So you guys can just click on the links there and you can be directed to whatever social media platform that, that fits your bill and also to the links to her book. Uh, so you can get a copy on Amazon. And if you want to get a free downloadable version to uh, go to her site as well, they'll be in the show notes below. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me on the show. This has been very exciting. And I'm, I'm hoping that everybody who's been listening has got at least one tidbit of good information for their business. Um, and I hope, of course, you guys take advantage of the book. Yeah. And, and I've taken um, quite a bit of notes here 
Um, be, just, you know, cause I'm on that journey as well. Uh, you know, so this is, has been valuable for myself and knowing that and it's kind of validated some of the things and that I've gone through that I'm not alone and, and that I'm actually heading down the right direction. So I want to thank you for that. But before you go, I do have one final question I want to ask, right. right? And that is kind of what I always ask us at the end of the show. And you can answer this, um, from an entrepreneur perspective and from a digital marketing perspective. But if, if you had one, only one piece of advice for someone who's looking to reignite their business um, as an entrepreneur and with digital marketing, what would that be? Um, I'd say going back to that piece of advice that I said earlier was was lifetime learner. Um, that would be the, that's the, the piece of advice that I always give everybody whenever when it comes to entrepreneurship. Um, we we cannot be successful entrepreneurs if we end our learning today or tomorrow. It, to be a lifelong thing and it really goes hand in hand with being an entrepreneur uh, no matter what it is that you're doing if you're doing digital marketing and of course with digital marketing there's changes going on all the time so that is uh, a necessary thing for digital marketing for sure but no matter what business you're in if you're an entrepreneur um, you always have to continue on learning on how best to be an entrepreneur how to be a leader how to be a manager how to uh, you know best serve your audiences so there's a, it's a, it's, it's a never ending thing, but I love it. I love learning. I go through podcasts and books and digital courses all the time. So, um, so I think it kind of requires a certain type of person to be an entrepreneur to continue that learning journey. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I actually, I enjoy that part of the entrepreneur <laughs> journey. It's, I'm learning so yeah. much. I'm expanding so much. There's so much out there that fascinates me and I, I'm just right there with you, Gene. Um, so I want to thank you for coming on the reignite podcast today. Um, you've been awesome. You've taught me and I know you've given value to my audience. So thank you so much, Gene. Thank you. It was wonderful being here and I appreciate you having me as a guest. All right. See you later. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Reignite Podcast. If this episode resonated with you in any way, please share it with a friend. One of the greatest experiences human beings is being able to mastermind as a group where we get together and collectively share and build off of each other's energy. Reigniting is no longer about accepting life as it comes, but designing the life you desire. We are committed to bringing you thought leading and thought provoking discussions to inform and motivate you in finding the joy in your journey, no matter what road you choose to take. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Todd Judkins, or send me an email at connect at Todd I'd love to hear about your struggles, your successes, and your thoughts. Thank you for listening, Reignite Nation. And always remember, the joy is not only in the destination, but what life has to offer in the journey. We'll be back with another full episode on Tuesday and with a short Reignite message on Friday just to jumpstart your weekend. Until then, keep that fuse lit and reignite.